Living the Faith podcast, brought to you by Restoring the Faith Media, restoringthefaith.com. Welcome back to another episode of Living the Faith. This is Joseph, and this is Mike. Joseph. Hi. How's it going? That's more formal. I've been calling you Joe this whole time. Sorry. I know. I went, I, we've been going the short form. We have. You can call me Michael tonight. Okay. In fact, I, well, no, I don't want to take any glory away from Saint Michael. Saint Michael, Michael. Yeah, yes, absolutely. I feel like that's going to come up. I have an intuition about that. You know, I don't know who has the higher up on the totem pole saint patron here. Yeah. It, it's kind of like a catch-22, right? I mean, patriarch of the church, St. Joseph, and then you have, like, the archangel, Michael, who casts Satan into the abyss all but an instant. That's pretty know. cool. Yeah, it and is. And, you know, an archangel is really not a high-ranking angel. It's, like, second from the bottom. Yeah, you were telling me about this. This is fascinating. Within the nine choirs, he's like, it's, like, angel, then archangel, and then there are seven more. So you yeah. get to like the cherubim and seraphim. Yeah, that, I mean, I, I knew I I've heard the, the listings of the choirs of angels. I just didn't yeah. think about them in a hierarchical manner. I was just like, oh, okay, there are these and these and yeah. these and these and these. But of course, Saint Michael's on top. Mm, not so much. I, know. I kind of want to someday understand that. That would like, be when nice. I, uh, when that's you get one to of heaven. the questions. One of the questions I'll ask is, you know, I mean, it would make more sense if you just, if our uh, if God just chose an angel, but he's an archangel. Right. But also, I mean, again, this is seems to be a recurring pattern. Like, I don't know, uh, a woman uh, of yeah. not apparent high birth, et cetera. Sure. She oh, yeah, is, yeah. Et cetera, no, no, to be no. his mother, et cetera. So this seems to be a recurring theme. Anyways, um, we do want to talk about St. Michael. We do want to talk about St. Michael, particularly in context of um, a particular landmark that bears his name, which is... Mont Saint Michel in Normandy, France, just across the channel uh, from England, north side of France, and um, there's That's a little Mount Saint Michael in English. Yes, don't call me Michelle it... during the show. <laughs> I will not call you Michelle, <laughs> although I have a sister we... named Michelle. Oh, that's confusing. It could be confusing if you were a French speaking, and you yes. were meeting our family, Michelle and Michel. Michel. Yep. So uh, there is this rock. That was built uh, in Norman on upon in Normandy. Um, there was you were you you I were think in the story. early eighth century, mm-hmm. early eighth century, like seven oh eight, seven oh nine, mm-hmm. is when this idea first came about. And this is a what you would call a tidal island. Mm-hmm. So when it's high tide, when the tide comes in, it's mm-hmm. an island, and when it's low tide, you can walk to it. Yeah, no, I, I, I visited there and I, I visited there in the middle of the day and the tide is in, but apparently it kind of just rushes across these, but you can't actually see the channel uh, from mm. even from up at the very top. You can't see the channel. It's that far. Kind oh, of you're inlet. kidding me. Yeah, it's very bizarre. Oh, I, I always imagine that it would be like, hi. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. It's weird. Wow. It's weird. I mean, again, I don't know how much of it is like actually just the channel and the tide is just that far out. But it's, you know, right there on the coast. Well, it's a pretty desolate rock. It is. At it least is. it was in 708. Yeah, exactly. So here's here's a little uh, representation of that. And there are many different aerial views. It's definitely worth looking up on uh, Google Maps. Um, but it is a fantastic structure. And it was, as you said, built in the early 8th century. Uh, That's when it was little, started, yeah. anyway. There's a little story around that. So uh, the the bishop of the, the region at the time was a bishop who is uh, actually venerated as a saint, St. Uh, bishop Aubert. And Aubert had a vision from St. Michael, and St. Michael told him to go build a structure. Nothing as, nothing as ornate, I think, was ever imagined, at least at the time. Um, as what we just showed, mm. but go build a priory on this rock. And Aubert, Saint Aubert, was a very good bishop and having a great time being a pastor of his people. And he was very discerning of spirits, and so he thought, you know, 
this sounds like it could be the devil sending me to on a fool's errand mm. to go build something in an impossible location. I mean, you can only move supplies during low tide and then, you know, high tide can be very dangerous. And this just seems very unlikely that St. Michael would be asking me to do this. So he disregarded. And then St. Michael came back to him in a dream. And the second time he said, hey, you know, I'm very serious about this, but I want you to build a, a priory. Mm-hmm. And um, like, if hey, you can, on. if you can believe it, Aubert forgot. <laughs> he forgot. I mean, he's busy, you know, as a bishop. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, busy. I'm busy. <laughs> I forget things, right? I forget to close the garage door and stuff. But you know what? Uh, anyway, yeah. so <laughs> the third Catholic time, humor. the third time, um, Saint Michael wasn't messing around, and um, so he he appears to him in a dream, and he says. Obear, you have forgotten what I've told you. You've disregarded me. You haven't done it yet. So I'm going to personally make sure that you don't forget. And he reaches out his finger and touches Obear like on his forehead, like, 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 like right yeah, here. Okay. And he infuses, I, know, I have a larger target area. Yeah, yeah. Here, so yeah. he infuses <laughs> his, his mind with this idea and this oh, vision wow. of what it will ultimately look like. And he says, wow. I'm going to make sure that you don't forget this time. And Aubert wakes up the next day and it's, you know, it's top of mind, but um, he goes to offer his daily mass and, you know, he's got people from the chancery, right? right. You know, clerics and priests and, and whatnot who are there assisting him at mass or mm-hmm. hearing the mass. And, at the conclusion, when he turns around, and this was before they had mirrors. Right. So he's kind of wondering why everyone is looking at him and have this aghast face. They're like, um, your excellency, there's a hole in your head. There's a hole. <laughs> it's just like this. He had a hole. There was a finger-sized hole in his skull, which he bore for the rest of his life as a mark from St. Michael. And, in fact, his skull... Saint Aubert's skull is still there at Mont Saint Michel, venerated in in one of the one of the areas, and it still it has a hole in the skull. You, you know what the, the, the the part about this story that kills me is is that I was there when I was fourteen years old, didn't even know that it was there, and I I have come and I have gone, and I did not know that that was that skull was there, and I would have loved to see that. That's a pretty neat story. Yeah. So this this was in the early eighth century, and of course Aubert got to work and and whatnot, and it's been since uh, redone. And I think the Benedictines are in charge of it now, and yes. have been for the majority of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it wasn't originally a Benedictine property. Mm, yes, correct. And uh, they seem to be a pretty um, a majority there, since the population of Mont Saint Michel is fifty people. Um, Wow! Don't let that fool you. If you ever go visit there someday, it's completely crowded during the day. the 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 interesting part, and and it it, it it's changing. The scenery is changing, but it used to be completely surrounded by water. Um, and uh, when the tide was in, um, yeah, it was basically you had if you wanted to attack this, which it has been attacked many many times. Um, it's been bombarded. Oh, I bet this is the been, perfect fortress. Oh yeah, it's impregnable. Um, it had. Of course, you have only so many hours to lay siege to it before you drown. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, there's a time limit, you know. Yeah, <laughs> you have to get in there, and you have to get the get the cannons all the way over over to there. When the, when at the time when they did get the cannons during the Hundred Years' War, they like got cannons up really to it, and then was like, uh, "Okay, all right, and gotta go. All right, that didn't work." Um, so yeah, pr- fantastic fortress, but let's talk a little bit about how it's built. Actually, it, it is, it's fascinating, uh, how it was built. It is a perfect image of Catholic hierarchy. It is a perfect image of the Catholic feudal society that existed at the time. So of course the church is at the very, very top. The, the, the tower of the church has a gorgeous golden statue of St. Michael, sl- uh, mm you know, with the, the devil underfoot. Um, and then, of course, the, the actual church itself, uh, the sanctuary, et cetera. And then you have the monastery underneath that. Um, and then underneath that are the great halls where the, the lords and the ladies resided and, and um, you know, had their, their civic duties, et cetera. How'd you like to live under a church? That would be pretty awesome. 
In yeah. fact, I, I have lived under a church, but that's another story for another time. Is it? <laughs> yes, it is. Is it? What's the cliff it was, note it, version? It was, it was a just a modern-day church in America in the middle of nowhere. Uh, there was a room, and I needed a place to stay, and so I stayed there. So, yeah, there's nothing nothing exciting about it. Nothing Not like exciting. Just under the— Just heaven touching earth every now and then. Yeah, right above exactly. You. Exactly. Yeah, no, okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry. I had to do that. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing special. Okay, I'm okay. sorry. Out of the ordinary. Ooh, I don't know if that's... Does God ordinarily come down on earth? Is he ordinarily with us? This is this is actually a really nuanced topic, so we're just going to steer clear of that. So let's, back to... Let's Sol- get back to, to <laughs> Monse Michelle. Michelle yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, so you have the, the great halls, and then you have the, sho- the shops and the houses and, you know, the, where the guilds would have been, et cetera. And then you have uh, the very bottom where you have the, uh, the fishermen and the farmers' residences would be. Um, and for those who are listening to the podcast um, in an audio format only, wherever your podcasts are found, be it Stitcher or the Apple or Android universe, we are currently displaying a magnificent image of Mont Saint Michel for our video users, and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel at Restoring the Faith Media. This is a perfect time to plug that. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> so that they know what we're talking about. Right, absolutely. So um, so there's there's some uh, an addition to that. So this this has been the symbol, the, 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 the physical symbol or the physical manifestation of uh, the patron of St. Michael uh, inside of France. And one of the um, main... Uh, entities that he's the patron of is the paratroopers in France. And uh, so they uh, take this very seriously. Um, oh, sure. The, of course, St. Michael is, is represented uh, traditionally as the armed arm of God. And uh, the paratroopers are super humble. And they said to say, oh, well, we're just the right hand of St. Michael. <laughs> <laughs> just, just the it's, armed yeah, arm. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. just the armed, ar- the one with the sword. Yeah. yeah, that one. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Anyways, they love Saint Michael. They have a tremendous devotion to Saint Michael. I can't, I can't make fun of that. That's pretty awesome. Um, it's even, uh, it's even uh, emblazoned on their shoulder patches. They have this fantastic image of uh, Saint Michael, which is. Uh, very militaristic, uh, very knightly, um, just wow. Um, That's something you wouldn't see in uh, in a U.S. military unit. Unfortunately, not. Sadly, unfortunately, not. Because you, you, we, you, I know you wish this was emblazoned on the Marine uniform that you wear. I do, I do. I wish, I wish that, but um, the Eagle Globe and Anchor has its merits too. It's just not quite as cool. It's cool. <laughs> But it's not St. Michael cool. Right. Yeah. Right. So um, they have such a devotion um, to uh, St. Michael that every year on his feast day, the paratroopers actually uh, swing down upon, uh, fly over Mont Saint-Michel, and they parachute out of the um, planes over the fields wow. around Mont Saint Michel. Look at those stills. So we're pulling up some stills to show the French paratroopers landing in the fields just outside of Mont Saint Michel. It, it just fantastic. It, it's it's epic, right? And they they ju- they jump out. They get prepared, uh, and they they go down during the feast day, and they. Uh, all jump out, and it's actually uh, not a simple thing. I mean, paratrooping obviously requires the skill that that requires, but these are assault yeah, planes. It requires jumping out of a perfectly functional airplane. Yes, yes. So, there's, 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 there's that. that. <laughs> the landing part is what's a little bit tricky. There's a little bit of trust at St. Michael around this, and it's actually a little bit more dangerous than your normal jump. Um, there's, uh, these are salt planes uh, when the tide is out. And so there's a lot of quicksand, and um, 
they haven't lost a paratrooper yet, but people have died, not as part of this exercise, but people have died in the quicksand around Mont Saint-Michel, which, of course, also made it difficult, I'm sure, when it was being attacked. Side note. Anyways, um, we would like to show you a very quick short of a l- just a little bit of that visual. I'm sorry for those who are listening on, on the podcast, but when you get home or whenever you get to a computer next time, look up the episode and you can actually see a little bit of this footage. Very, very impressive. We'll just give you a little hint here. Um, you're jumping out of a C-130. And uh, just jumping there. In this case, this is... Uh, singing along yes i am actually i'm just lip syncing right now i was wondering if your mic was muted yeah no it's not (laughs) i will know what does that what does that translate to so it's beautiful it's a beautiful uh lyric set of lyrics um it's so mon dieu is of course my god um of course yes uh, and then uh, they say, "Don et moi, give me, give me." It's like it's in, in the imperative. Uh, so, my God, my God, give me, give me the torment, the suffering, all that which people do not want. Mm-hmm. I'm paraphrasing slightly, but mm-hmm. all that, all the suffering and the pain and the torments that people don't want, give it to me. I'll take it. Uh. And it, it's just, it's. You should look up the translation sometime. I'm sorry, I wish I had the translation here with me, but it, it is a fantastic. That's the gist of this of the song, and uh, it is rousing. Uh, it's it's quite quite fantastic. So this is you know the uh, the devotion that they that the paratroopers have for Saint Michael. Uh, the f- French take Saint Michael very seriously, as it should it, we it all. It said in the video that they're jumping on uh, Michael Mess. Yes, in that in that particular case, so they will have um, the the feast of Saint Michael, which is Michaelmas itself, Michael's mm. Mass, as it yes. were. Yes, yes. Um, so similar to Christmas, Christ's yes, Mass, Christ's Mass. Yes, right. Huh? Is there a Mary's Mass? I, I mean, oh, Mary, Mary Mass. Never thought about that. Mary Mass. Hmm. Hmm. December eighth. Oh, 8th? that's what it was. I remember hearing about this. This is a complete side note. So we're just going to skip it for now because we'll bring that back to our audience at a different show because that's actually Oh, suspense. Cool. I like suspense. The suspense. So um, obviously St. Michael is a wonderful saint. Uh, this is a fantastic um, opportunity. Um, if you ever go to France or go to Normandy, um, you can visit Mont Saint-Michel. It is a stunning tribute to the hierarchy that God has instituted eternally and that uh, is manifested on earth. Um, definitely. And, should. and you've got to stick your finger in uh, St. Aubert's skull if they let you. I would love to do that. Or at least see the hole. Let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Living the Faith Podcast, brought to you by Restoring the Faith Media, restoringthefaith.com.